Right, uh, fire. Um, and let's move on from uh, prevention to suppression. Once the fire starts, what do we what do we do about it? Well, uh, thinking of the combustion elements, we can remove any of those elements. Um, remove the fuel. Um, Okay, uh, if you're thinking of paper or wood burning, that may uh, not uh, be a terribly good idea to go in there and start kicking things down or, or away from each other. That is a good way to break up a campfire, though. Uh, just uh, stirring it around, um, you know, separating. It, I, yeah, it, it sort of separates. You can't separate the, the fuel from the oxygen, but you can definitely separate um, the individual pieces of fuel from each other and that tends to um, ensure that the, the temperature, the, the uh, heat that is necessary to maintain the fire um, gets dissipated. Um, when the, the pieces of wood are close together, they will uh, warm each other. But on their own, uh, it becomes a bit more difficult than that. It's a, it's a fairly quick way to remove a fire. But um, in terms of, say, uh, you know, a gas fire, well, shut off the gas. In terms of a, um, a fuel fire, uh, gas, diesel, oil, whatever, um, shut off the supply of oil if you can. Um, so uh, reduce those. Uh, remove them. Um, and again, you know, uh, as with the prevention, re remove paper and combustible materials from, uh, you know, areas adjacent to the fire. Now, um, of course, oxygen is a component. Remove the oxygen. How do you do that? Um, well, uh, yeah, well, we'll get into that, but you, you can, in fact, do some removal of oxygen. There's, there's various ways of of doing that, um, smothering, for example, so that um, the oxygen is is reduced, and very quickly the the fire itself will use up all the oxygen. There is no oxygen left, and then the fire goes out. It's still hot. But, um, remove the temperature, and uh, yeah, this is um, this is a big one. Uh, you know, particularly when you get into like spraying water on it, that is very, very effective at, at reducing the temperature, removing the temperature. So, um, uh, uh, if it's an electrical fire, turn the power off. That removes the temperature, the power that is uh, helping to keep the fire uh, going. Now, um, when we've got these uh, you know, fires, we've got fire extinguishers that, that we're going to be using. Um, we have different classes of uh, fire, and this is, the classes are uh, given according to the, the combustible fuel, the type of material that is burning. So a class A is uh, it's, it's wood, um, you know, and paper. Think of ash to, to remember class A, because uh, paper and wood will burn to ash. Um, in terms of class B, that's flammable liquids, uh, gas or oil. Um, you know, think, think of boiling to remember class B. Uh, then you've got, you know, um, You've got uh, class C is electrical fires. You know, think computer, class C, okay. Um, now the, uh, the last one, probably one that you are not going to encounter unless you are in a uh, specific industry uh, that is doing uh, specialized work in this regard is class D and that's metal. And I'm sorry, I can't think of anything starts with D. That's easy to remember in terms of remembering that it's it's fire, you know, burning metals. Um, so 
going back through those, um, the Class A, um, well, water works very well against uh, paper and wood burning. Uh, as I say, that removes um, the temperature because the, the water cools things down very quickly. It also removes um, the at least the access of, of the fuel and the oxygen. The fuel becomes covered with water and the ox oxygen can't get directly at the fuel. So, um, but there's also uh, the dry chemical. And the dry chemical that we talk about here is the ABC class fire extinguishers. Um, we'll come back to that. Um, the uh, B class flammable liquids. Um, you may have situations where you are using um, uh, carbon dioxide, for example, or other um, uh, gases, fire uh, extinguisher gases. Um, again, we'll come back to that. Um, but again, dry chemical um, works okay on the uh, class B fires in gas and oil. Um, electrical fires. Uh, CO2, or you've got other gas discharge systems, or again, the, the dry chemical. Uh, now, in, the, in these classes, you've got the, the dry chemical. It's a white powder. Um, it uh, uh, works um, on all three classes of fires, the, the uh, Class A wood, Class B oil, Class C electrical. Um, and so that is what you are going to primarily find in terms of uh, portable uh, fire extinguisher systems. The little red bottles hanging on the wall. Um, they're good for all three kinds. And uh, one thing that I should really strongly suggest is have fire extinguisher training. Um, these things have to be uh, recharged and refilled um, every year or two. So um, you're going to have... Uh, periods of time when you have an awful lot of these things that are going back to the manufacturers what the manufacturers are going to be doing with it is emptying them out and refilling them so you might as well empty them out uh, before you send them to be refilled and you can you know use that as a, a training scenario you get the uh, uh, you know whatever staff you want out in the parking lot, build a fire, and have them practice putting it out with the fire extinguishers. The thing is, um, the first time that people actually use a fire extinguisher, they usually think it, something's gone wrong, it's exploded on them. Because there's a heck of a noise, um, they get a bit of a kick from the uh, spray coming out of the nozzle, and the, the dry chemical, the dust from the dry chemical looks like smoke. Well, in a sense it is smoke because smoke is just particulate matter in the air. But anyways, um, you know, people get very upset. They, they pull the trigger on the fire extinguisher the first time and they think, oh, I've done something wrong. I've done something terrible. You know, no. Um, again, you know, teach them, spray the material, not... The flames, spray at the base of the fire, um, sweeping movement side to side, uh, you know, and don't panic, and, and that sort of thing. Now, um, like I say, you know, you're probably doing this out in the parking lot. If you've got Class D extinguishers, they are a dry chemical but a different kind. It's this uh, purple powder, which actually adheres to metal. and. Uh, I'll just say, know where the CEO's car is if you're doing this. And I don't know if you want to build a fire close to the CEO's car or far away, but just be aware. <laughs>